Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, a financial scandal has just hit the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. Michigan State Police are investigating this afternoon. So here's what we know so far. The chairman of the board, Matt Collins, says he became concerned about the accuracy of management reports and financial statements. So he ordered a forensic audit. Then the board put Chief Financial Officer William A. Smith on leave. Records were given to MSP for a criminal investigation. We're gathering more information right now. We'll have a live report on Local 4 News at 5 on this investigation. Meantime, new testimony today focused on the medical history of Zion Foster in the second degree murder trial against her cousin, Jalen Brazier. The defendant's attorney claims Foster suffered from seizures, and that's why Foster died while watching TV and taking drugs with Brazier. But a medical examiner on the stand testified there was no information about seizures, and she could not determine a cause of death because Foster's body has never been found. Brazier admits she died at his home. He panicked and then threw the 17-year-old's body in a dumpster. Tonight at 5, investigators dig deeper into what was found on Brazier's phone. If you'd like to see the testimony live, we are streaming that trial right here on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. Then make sure to come back to Local 4 for updates right up to the verdict. Detroit skyline is forever changed with the arrival of the Gordie Howe Bridge construction. Now, a major milestone is upon us. The bridge developers tell us they are a mere 85 feet away from making the bridge run all the way from shoreline to shoreline. Local 4 cameras were part of a tour allowed up on that bridge deck today, and the view of the Detroit skyline and the waters of the Detroit River provided a breathtaking view. More details on the project's timeline when you join us at 5 and 6. Ascension hospitals, doctors, nurses, and patients are still dealing with the fallout from last week's ransomware attack, but the hospital wants you to know it is still doing business. Ascension says its hospitals and doctors' offices remain open, but you may see longer wait times and delays as they are using manual systems. Ascension pharmacies can fill prescriptions. They can't, though, accept credit cards, but you can use your copays and cash. Emergency rooms are open, but some cases might be diverted if they can be handled better, let's say, in another nearby hospital. Surgeries continue unless you're notified otherwise. Some testing and imaging procedures are being delayed so the hospital can focus on inpatient and emergency care. We'll share updates as we get them. We've been seeing sunshine around our studios here in downtown Detroit, but some of you might see a little bit of rain, especially if you live south of I-94. Brett Collar is filling in for Kim Adams today, and you are tracking some evening showers. So what part of the area are we talking about? Like you mentioned, areas south of I-94 have the best chance. Overnight, though, I think most everybody gets in on the action. Uh, in the meantime, just some filtered sunshine across the area. Looking pretty good. Numbers, though, a good deal different than they were this time yesterday. In some spots, 20 degrees colder 61 right now in Port Huron low 70s in both Detroit and in Monroe so there is a change in the air in terms of temperature not much of a change in terms of what's coming next yesterday we had rain moving up today we have more of the same showers down there headed this way it looks like the Tigers should be okay this evening but it does look like most of us will get some rain tonight maybe tomorrow as well we'll break down that forecast in just a bit it has been a huge day at the hush money trial facing former President Donald Trump star witness Michael Cohen on the stand. And we have a new ruling on that gag order hanging over the former president. And we've also seen another show of support outside the courthouse. Very busy. Kimberly Gill joins us now to run through some of the key moments of a very busy day. Yeah, very busy indeed. Karen, good afternoon to you first. We'll tell you prosecutors have indicated Michael Cohen will be their last witness, which means they'll rest their case after his testimony is finished. Late this afternoon, Trump's attorney is cross-examining Cohen, who was once the former president's fix-it guy. He's trying to raise questions about Cohen's motive. So far, Cohen has admitted on the stand he sells merchandise that shows Trump in handcuffs and offers a coffee mug that says, quote, send him to the big house, not the White House. Cohen admitted he wants to see Trump convicted. Earlier, prosecutors tried uh, to uh, tied, tried to tie Trump to the falsified records at the center of his hush money case. They went through a series of checks and invoices sent to Cohen back in 2017. He testified each one falsely claimed to be for services rendered when they were actually reimbursement for the money he had paid Stormy Daniels. Then prosecutors asked about the times Cohen has lied in the past trying to get ahead of attacks on his credibility during cross-examination. Cohen said he regrets doing things for Trump 
Trump that caused him to violate his moral compass. Meanwhile, Republican lawmakers continue to line up outside the courthouse showing their support for the past and possibly future president. Among them today, the current Speaker of the House. I, I called President Trump and told him I wanted to be here myself to call out what is a travesty of justice. And I think everybody around the country can see that. Uh, President Trump is, is a friend and I wanted to be here to support him. Okay, finally, let's talk about the new gag order ruling. An appeals court in New York has upheld the order that bars the former president from talking about jurors, witnesses, and others connected to the case. The court found Trump's public statements have posed a threat to the integrity of testimony in the case and says the trial judge made the right call. So we'll have more key moments from the trial when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until the, then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. There's a devastating bus crash. It's under investigation right now after eight people were killed, dozens injured. Happened just north of Orlando, Florida on State Road 40. The Highway Patrol says the bus was carrying 53 farm workers when it collided with a truck. Not clear exactly what went wrong, but the bus ended up smashing through a fence and ended up on its side. 45 people are in the hospital right now, eight of them in critical condition. Here at home, it is a battle of humans versus nature that we've been covering for years. You may have heard about us talking about those Phragmites, an invasive species here in Michigan. Well, now it looks like we may have reached a turning point. Let's bring in Paula Tubman. She's in Washington Township, where a very important survey has gotten underway to gauge the progress. So what are we hearing so far, Paula? Really, some fascinating stuff. Really big news when we talk about the battle against this invasive species because it's early in the season, but the indications are that there could be a change in the tide. Known to swallow up waterways, outcompete native species, and generally take over everywhere it establishes itself. The weather being as warm as it has to, they've grown earlier. Phragmite has been a decades upon decades foe. Clever with its deep roots and ability to reseed quickly when under attack, it is a mammoth, economic, environmental, and aesthetic super nuisance. It takes over what drain there could be, so flooding becomes an issue. It can start growing into the road and crumble infrastructure. It impacts your driving capabilities. It could block your view see from other vehicles. Today, we're on the track with naturalists from the Six Rivers Land Conservancy and Lake St. Clair Sisma, short for Cooperative Invasive Species Management Area. They are surveying their treatment areas. We're right here. Mm -hmm. We're going to go up mound to 32. And it's promising. We know that it's like right within here, so we want to make sure that we're going slow and we're being extra careful catching all of it. In this specific program in which a targeted herbicide has been deployed, it takes up to three years to kill off the organic life cycle of the plant. This year is year four, the measuring year, to find out whether or not the efforts are working. And thus far, this is frag from last year that has been treated. So we know treatment took place and we know that it actually did a really good job. They are. This is the first year I'm seeing it mostly clear. So this is honestly fantastic. This particular program addresses parts of Macomb County, the townships of Washington, Shelby, Clinton, Ray, Macomb, Harrison, and Chesterfield. Like I'm not seeing too much right now, so this is good. Add in the village of Richmond and the city of Sterling Heights, targeting roadsides, easements, and some private properties. For the next three weeks, surveyors are looking for patches of Phragmite, and yes, they are finding new growth but more and more they are finding no signs. This spot was a monoculture last year, so. Yeah, no, it looks real bad in there. It looks a ton better. A clear ditch is a good ditch. This was good treatment. With these kinds of winds, the winds of war could easily shift as finally the humans seem to be winning. Yeah, so remember, these are the roadway and easement programs. I do want to address the waterfront properties that have turned uh, basically waterfront into fragmighty front property. It really is a different ball game. So when we talk about the St. Clair River or uh, big bodies of water, like Lake St. Clair, uh, because there's so much mammal and bird life, they have to look at that differently. They have to treat it very, very differently. But listen, these kinds of winds will inform what they're able to do there. And Karen, one last important note. How about this? Sterling Heights roadways almost eradicated. Wow. All right. Interesting. Paula, we appreciate it.